Chris with Colbright here with another customer question. He asks, does this nitrogen cylinder have a DOT or ISO stamped on it? The gas supplier I contacted requires that to fill tanks. How is the flow of gas uh, out of the tank controlled? Thanks. So uh, just a brief overview on tanks. It doesn't matter, really matter if it's a CO2 tank or a nitrogen tank. They're all going to have uh, markings on the top of it when you get it. Um, this first one here is your DOT stamp. And then next to it is 1800. So that means it's a DOT certified up to 1800 PSI. Then there's a bunch of numbers next to that. And so this is be, um, I'll get closer here, but this, it would be the serial number of the t actual tank itself. And then as we go forward, there is uh, the next set of letters. This is going to be the certification date. So this was April of 23, and this is the independent uh, uh, certifier mark here, this A. So CO2 tanks have a, uh, a five-year recertification life. So in four of 28, if you brought that back in to get refilled, they would tell you, well, this needs to be retested. And it's called a hydro testing. And all they're really going to do is um, it just takes a few minutes. They charge like 10 or 15 bucks to recertify it. It's not that really not a big deal. And then what they'll do is they'll cross this out and then they'll mark the new date below it. And it'll give you another five years. Here's the size of it, five pounds. And then um, as we go a little bit farther, the TW is the tear weight. So this way, the tank empty weighs 7.75 pounds. So when you fill it, if you put five pounds of CO2 in it, uh, we're up to 12.75 pounds. And then if you, as you use it and then you weigh it again, you'll know how much CO2 you've got left. Um, his, the second part to his question was about like, how does the, how's the gas controlled as it leaves the tank? So this is a nitro regulator. You can tell by the way the the valve um, that connects to the tank. It's uh, a male fitting where CO2 tanks have a female fitting. So these are two primary regulator for, regulators for CO2. This is a mini regulator for CO2. This is a primary regulator for nitrogen. And then below that, you've got secondary regulators. They're secondary because they don't have the, the tank connections on them. They just have a barb on them. So for here, secondary regula regulators, it doesn't really matter if you're using a if you're connecting these to a nitrogen or a CO2 because your tubing, let's say you're, you've got this hooked up to your tank and you've, you're going to three different kegs that you want to control the PSI for each each keg. You can come off the tank here, down to tubing, and then the tubing would go like into the barb here or here if you want three of them, and then so this regulators feeding these regulators and then the tubing here would go down to each one of your kegs and so you could precisely control how much psi is going to each one of your kegs um, another way to distribute co2 is either a secondary regulator like this or like our kits come with just a manifold with an on off switch and so you're you don't have control of how much pressure is going to each keg um, but for a jockey box not really necessary because um, it's an unbalanced system anyway so this is more of like a permanent setup um, so if you're building a mobile wire trailer, you might want this, but um, you can probably get away with just a manifold like a, that are in our kits. But you can always upgrade to this this if you if you feel like you need it in the future. So, um, yep, that's it. So if you have any more questions, support at coldbreakusa.com. I am Chris, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>